Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Talk About It Tuesday. I'm your host, Malin. And I'm your other host, Jamie. And today's article is, I don't, it's going to be divisive, I think. It's going to be an interesting conversation. No surprise. No surprise. Shocker. (laughs) Is this your article? (laughs) Yeah. Today's article actually was a listener submission. So thank you very much for submitting that. It comes to us uh, today from ABC News back in February 23rd of 2024. And the article title reads, Alabama woman describes heartbreak over some IVF treatment stopping following court ruling on embryos. Subtitle is the Alabama Supreme Court ruled that frozen embryos are children. So I'm going to, this is a rather long article, so I'm going to do my best to just kind of summarize it and then we can get into it. Um, this article follows a couple different individuals that were in the process of going through IVF treatments and the process had to stop because of this ruling. And the ruling, if we can all remember for a second, is embryos are considered children underneath the new ruling. And so disposing of these embryos is could be, opens you up to civil and criminal acts. So we have several people that are going through the process. They're kind of stuck now because of this ruling in Alabama. They're not able to finish their their, their IVF treatments. And there are several people that go on to ask questions like, what am I supposed to do? Pay for storage for these embryos forever? Um, if What if I'm done having my family? I've met my goal. I can't dispose of them. This really, you can kind of see that there's a lot of discussion and heartache that's going around within these individuals that are going through, um, you know, the IVF treatment and any other kind of fertil- you know, fertilization therapy. Um, so, That in a nutshell nutshell is the article. Like I said, it's a pretty healthy read. I would encourage anybody to go and click on the link that's in our show notes that will take you through the article and you can read it more in depth. But Jamie, what are your thoughts around uh, around this? You know, there's a couple of things in the article that I found were really impactful for me. Um, One of them was the there was one uh, one justice that wrote the dissent um, and he was the only one that fully dissented, if, if I remember correctly. And, you know, he kind of talked about the far reaching implications that this ruling could have and, you know, noted that no other court in the country has has gone so far as to say, you know, that when this is a pretty declarative statement about when they believe life begins. And as I was reading through some pretty heartbreaking stories. I mean, they're really, it was pretty impactful for the women that were, that were interviewed and were kind of sharing their experiences. Um, But I also started thinking about how this could turn out down the road. Like some of the implications of this ruling could really, I mean, it could be a weird, there's, there's some weird things that could be interpreted into this. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. It's that slippery slope we often talk about. This this feels pretty slippery to me. Well, and it's not going to be any surprise when when you read through this and we're we're treating embryos as the same as children. I I really can't can't find any fault in doing that. I think it does put a lot of people in a lot of different situations and it kind of stops well, it stops this process and in, in all together as well. And I know there's families that are stuck and they're trying to get the, um, you know, get the treatments that they need and, and get the implanta- in, the IVF treatments done. So then hopefully they can either continue growing their family or grow their family for the first time. So, you know, it's hard for me as this is kind of unfolding. And I know we read this article um, that's been about a month old now. It's a little bit hard for me because... I don't think I can, I don't think I can disagree because I kind of agree with their, their, their stance here is that these are children. What's, what's troubling is that where these individuals are at within the process, you know, I think when something like this, when the law changes, there's obviously people in different degrees of the process when this law goes through. So I almost think that you need to let the individuals that are in the current process to finish, whatever that means, even if that is the disposal, the destruction of the embryos, regardless if you're you know, a, a firm believer or not. 
And then I think with new people coming in after the law, that's where they're, they should be affected. Um, and I know that's a very clinical view at how this should operate, but I really find, I find no issue, Jamie, that they've ruled that embryos are considered children. Where I think I have a little bit of a hiccup is what do all these individuals do that are in the middle of the process now? Because the laws change, the rules change in the middle of the game. And you can read in this article, there's a lot of people that have invested a, a lot of money and they've already spent the, the money and now they're stuck. And do they get a refund? And, and I, I hate to even sound so clinical or so unfeeling. We're talking about people expanding their families. And so to say they should get their money back, that's, that's not the point, but it's like, we, they have to think through the individuals that are in the middle now that they were kind of put in this position. They can't finish what they've started. What are they left to do? Well, and in light of this law, there they talked about several clinics, like just completely indefinitely pausing their programs. So they can't even go get those embryos, you know, implanted because the the clinics aren't doing it. So it is it is brought it, from what it sounds like it's brought several families just to a complete stop as you know this is no longer a way that they can get treatment because clinics don't want the liability. Um one of the things that that I had read was that it was even accidental. So if a clinic destroys an embryo, even by accident, then they could be held criminally liable. And no wonder, I no wonder clinics are like, no, we're not doing that anymore. You know, so that's an entire state full of women and families who want to grow their family and now can't if they need this kind of assistance. And that is, you know, it's pretty troubling to me as well. I can't imagine that I, I and I don't know enough about the process because this is not how I chose to grow my family. But, you know, if insurance would cover some of that, they wouldn't cover it out of state. You know what I'm saying? Like there's just lots of there's lots of little things. And I was even thinking, you know, if that's the case, I could look down to me conceiv conceivably. I could look down the road and see um, if I go to work sick, not knowing Maybe that I'm carrying like the flu virus and I get a pregnant woman sick and she ends up in the hospital. Could I be could I be prosecuted for endangering a child? Could a mom who missed her missed her prenatal appointment because of something else be charged with child endangerment? You know what I mean? Like I feel like there's so many farther reaching implications than just, you know, trying to I, I think I hope, I hope that the intention of the law was to protect, uh, protect families that they had a, a positive intentionality. I have to believe that. I always do. I say that over and over on this, on this particular <laughs> podcast. I, I hope for positive intentionality, but, you know, I don't know that some of those things were thought through very well. Well, and the article did say that the whole reason why this is happening now is there was a clinic that accidentally um, destroyed some embryos. I think I think it was a f accidental fall or something, and so the family sued, and the court ruled that. And I'm I'm really kind of piecing it together from my memory because I, I I'm scanning the article, but it's so big I can't find it. But what I remember was um, the court ruled that it was not the clinic's fault, and so the Supreme Court actually overturned it and said put it underneath a wrongful death of a child is basically what it's it's gone to. And so from that ruling, though, it has opened up the floodgates of all these other situations that I think maybe you're a little right. I don't think anybody's really thought about what does this mean? Um, and I'm even from a from I'm trying to look through my moral lens here when you're trying to start a family and you want to build your family. My understanding of the IVF process is that you take you take eggs, you fertilize them, and then you freeze them and you implant. And I don't, I can't remember if you implant more than one or not, but then there's probably other embryos that are just waiting to be implanted. And so when a person's done growing a family, they destroy those embryos. Underneath this new law, if, if I'm understanding the process correctly, 
it's the destroying of the embryos that would open them up for liability. And so what do you do with all these, these embryos that are frozen? One of the people that are going through it, like I said earlier, they're like, do, am I supposed to just pay for storage forever? Am I, do I have to implant them? Can I give them to somebody else? And there's some family members that are like, I don't want to give my embryos to someone else. I'd rather them not be given to another person. So they're kind of stuck in this, in this way. Um, and, and that's kind of, that's hard because you're trying to help create life in, in situations where it's not possible. And we live in a day and age where technology and science could help with that. And then now there's a ruling that's pretty much shutting all of that down. And again, I can't really argue the fact because I morally believe that a fertilized egg becomes a child. And so I, I fall in the camp of, I agree with their ruling where I'm stuck is how is this being applied across the board almost immediately? And I think that's where I'm, a, that's where I'm just a little bit like there should be some consideration for families that are in the middle of this process or even going towards the end of the process. And maybe this applies to people coming into these programs. And I know what you're saying that some of these clinics have just completely shut down and shut off their, their whole programs, which is unfortunate. Um, some families in the article said they can't even afford to go cross state lines. And some people are choosing to take their, their embryos and transport them to a state that is continuing their IVF um, fertility programs. Uh, so I know there's some people who can move and there's some people who can't, but it's really causing quite an issue right now for those individuals. Well, and quite frankly, you know, this is, this is the, these are the decisions that scare me the most because it's that it's that okay what's next if this is if this is now the the new thought process then what's next you know is a mom who has a miscarriage is she open to prosecution under criminal law because she ate she ate lettuce that she didn't wash first you know what i'm saying like there's so many things that could potentially come from this and in in my thought process is that you know we have gotten even even this it, let's say alabama decides to restart clinics in in alabama decide to restart their program and they have embryos that they know are not viable are they supposed to just implant them anyway and hope for the best? Is that is that what's best for their patients? You know, there's a reason that process looks the way it does. And in my opinion, a few lawyers who became justices have made a decision that they're not qualified to make. Um, and and that's, I don't know, it just, it ugh, none of it sits well with me. None of it sits well with me. The fact that we're in this position to begin with doesn't sit well with me though. And we've talked about that before too. So, well, in a different perspective, and again, I don't, I don't need, I don't want hate mail and I'm not, <laughs> so I'm picking my words very carefully. So Jamie, when you hear these, just know I'm introducing a new perspective and that perspective is, and I, I'm, I'm building off of what you were saying about if a woman eats lettuce and she has a miscarriage, to me, if a child, if a miscarriage happens or you lose a pregnancy through a natural means, even if the mother eats lettuce, to me, that's, that is not something that is, shouldn't be criminally liable because there's, there's no reason for it's naturally occurring. I think one perspective could be if you look at this whole IVF process, it's not a natural process. It's a process we've developed to overcome some couples that have some infertility issues that we're trying to get around. And again, it's because we live in this world of science that can do this. You know, you go back 50 years ago, if a couple got together and they were not able to have a child, they were not, they were not able to have a child. And so I just want to add that different perspective to say, I don't think it's when a woman naturally loses a child. I think this is all around this unnatural process of creating a child going through like IVFs and stuff. Not that it's wrong. I just, to my mind, I could see how that would be a little bit different. If that makes sense. I could see how that would be different too. The problem is, is that when you start legislating things that should not be legislated, that's when, that's when suddenly the things that we would normally think, why would we prosecute 
a woman who's grieving the loss of a child, right? But that's when those kind of things start to happen in in a society where um, courts are allowed to make decisions for uh, things that they were never intended to make decisions for. You know, I just, um, I don't know. I just, I, I could see how this could open the floodgates. I see that it's not. That's not what I'm saying that this law is doing in any way, shape or form. But I see that that could be a slippery slope. And I think that, you know, we've seen, we've seen that we're kind of starting to see that now, you know, the overturning of Roe v. Wade. And and now we have a court, you know, deciding that that unattached out of the body embryos are are liable for prosecution for wrongful death. And that's I don't know. That's the beginning of a slippery slope to me. Well, I, and I go back, I think if you if you go back to the intent of where this came from, you had a family, a grieving family who lost those embryos. And to them, they were children, right? They were their, their future offspring and they were gone and there was no recourse. There's nothing you could do. There was no, it was not illegal at the time. And so when they brought that lawsuit and they first were, you know, they were told no, and I'm paraphrasing, but then the, it was the Supreme Court of Alabama that came back and said, we're we're putting this underneath the uh, endangered children. You know, basically they are children and it actually gave them something. So in this particular instance, it, you can almost say the same thing we're saying together in this conversation was the driving force that even started this because it gave a grieving mother the ability to hold someone liable for basically eliminating her future children, where before this decision, there was nothing that could be done. But there was already something in place for that. That's what malpractice is for. If the family felt that the doctor or the clinic had acted in in anything less than good faith, they could have prosecuted under malpractice. Um, we can't hold a doctor liable for anything other than not doing the right thing when they had a choice. You know what I'm saying? People die on the table all the time. And... It's, you know, it's a sad thing. It's a terrible thing. And it's a natural thing. And so, I, I mean, I feel like that was already something they could have if they felt that uh, that prosecuting the clinic, the doctor, whatever, for the loss of their embryos is was a matter of their uh, their negligence. They had the option to do that under malpractice. And that that hasn't changed. You know what I'm saying? Well, a little bit, but I don't think that it was, I think under malpractice even, I don't think it would be considered the loss of embryos as, I think it was a category that was not defined. I don't think you could have had that. And I think malpractice, I, it's very hard for malpractice for what I know of, which is very little, is that you have to, it's not just that an accident happened. I think you have to prove malintent with malpractice. And that's very hard to do with a doctor who might make the wrong decision, but they're trying to do it for the benefit of the patient and they make one wrong decision. So I think it's hard. And my whole, my whole point to that statement was, you know, we're talking about this from a certain lens, the lens of the, the mother who lost their embryos due to even an accident. She probably felt there was no, no recourse for her. And this decision gives her that ability now. So I think I think you're right. I think we all have to make sure with these decisions that are being done, what how far reaching are they? What are the implications? And I think there should be some thought into them. This particular one is hard for me though because again, morally I can't I can't go against it, but at the same time my heart goes out to everybody that's kind of stuck in this program because what are they supposed to do? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think a lot of things weren't thought through, but uh thankfully it's not my state yet, I guess. I don't know. Not yeah. that this would directly affect me, but it is a, it is a pretty, I don't know. It's kind of surprising, I guess, but nothing should be surprising in 2024. <laughs> right. Really? This is the year of the, can or of the, the uh, everything is going to be coming out of the woodwork, but I do think it's important. And, and thank you for sending this, this article to us. And I hope more people send us articles like these, even having this conversation in some small way, I think, is even if I'm for it and you're against it or you're for it and I'm against it, just talking about it and getting it out there and saying, hey, this is this this doesn't fit all everybody's needs. And I'm speculating here, but, you know, what a travesty would this be if the mother who lost her embryos and wanted some action and the Supreme Court 
did give her that ruling. What if she's like, but I didn't want to take other people's opportunities away from having a family. Maybe she's even feeling bad about the decision and what's being done with it. I think that's also another perspective that we can't forget. You know, we can't just assume a villain is a villain because we put that label on them. Um, And so just having this conversation and going and seeing at it from different angles is, I think, a good step. But where do we go from here? That's that's a bigger question. And that's one that, um, as I'm looking at the time, we don't have the opportunity to go into as we're running along already. It's but, above my pay grade anyway. So. Yeah. <laughs> even, if, even if we could chat about it, it's like, what are we going to do about it? It's just, <laughs> I think we both can agree that even though we look at it differently, it's what a, what a conundrum to be in. And mm-hmm. I, I, I'm glad I'm not there making the decision. And I feel very sorry for everyone who's going through that program. So, yeah, ditto with that. Yep. Let's wrap it up, I guess. So, um, again, thank you everyone for listening to, uh, to our episode. Uh, please come back next week when we'll have a whole new article and a whole new set of opinions. And don't forget to check us out on Thursday with our regular episode of Roundtable Mindset. Um, it's a good one. So join us. All right, everybody. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.